You know, it's crazy. Something that is very interesting to do, but also can be very dangerous to do is looking back, reflecting, uh, thinking about different situations and what could have been thinking about different possibilities on what you feel should have been and even some stuff that you feel should not have been uh, because it's crazy because life you can make a small decision you can make a big decision but those decisions they have such an impact on just the tra trajectory of your life how different things are going how different things may not go but your decisions your choices that you make they impact everything and in this first question on this special episode of question from subscribers that, that came from my guy big meal he wants to go down memory lane and, and really wonder if hollywood brown if he has some regret when it came to his decision to leave the Baltimore Ravens. Let's just get straight into it. Uh, he said, hey, Engraven, I've been following the channel for a little over a year now. I appreciate that. Uh, he said, I will be asking my very first question. Uh, what are your thoughts with Hollywood Brown regretting ever leaving Baltimore? Uh, thanks uh, for all the work and time you put into making great content on a team that we all love. Wish you and your family the best. And as always, keep it clean. Appreciate that big meal. Thank you, man. Um, with Hollywood, that's a good question um, because I know right now, especially right now, with the ra the way that the Ravens have been moving, especially this off season, new offensive coordinator really putting it in at wide receiver and whatnot. Um, I think a lot of Ravens fans have been thinking about, oh, Hollywood, you should have just stuck around. Oh, Hollywood, you should have stayed. Oh, Hollywood, you should still be here because this year, I believe, would be his fifth year because this would be yeah his fifth year option year. Um, so this would have been the, 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 f the final year of his deal or whatnot. Um, but a lot of people are wondering, like, man, the, did he regret leaving the Baltimore Ravens? And it's easy to think that, uh, especially when you look at what happened with Hollywood. But at the same time, it's important that you actually look at what happened with Hollywood because it wasn't all bad. Now, of course, the Arizona Cardinals, they have not had success last year. But at the same time, Hollywood was doing his thing last year. He really was. He, he was going off last year, but then he got hurt. That's the only thing that messed him up. He got hurt. Yeah, even he had a couple of drops. I know, I know Raven, the bit of Ravens fans. Cause I know that, that when it comes to um, being a fan, and, and this happens with any football team. When you're a fan of a football team and you got a player, uh, whether it's one of your favorite players or not, but a player that was very impactful on that football team, that player wants to leave, fans can feel some type of way. They can feel offended. They can feel upset. Like, hey, why, why do you, why do you want to leave my favorite football team? You should want to be here. You should want to play for this favorite football team. This is the team that drafted you. This is the team that gave you an opportunity. What are you doing want to leave? Why? So fans can take stuff personally. Um, but that's, again, it's important to always separate business from personal. But with football, it can be very, very hard, and I get it. But anyway, with Hollywood, with him requesting to have been trade, him ask have, him have asking for a trade for years actually before it happened, um, a lot of fans were like, "Ah, ha ha, that's that's what you get. See what happens. That's why this what you left for, really, to go and do that, to be on that team and da 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 da." But again, Hollywood was doing his thing. He really was. He he was doing his thing before he got hurt. And I don't think him leaving, it, it wasn't nothing to do with the city of Baltimore. It wasn't nothing to do with the fans, anything like that. It wasn't anything to do with Lamar. It was just all about the system. It was all about the system. And I think he just felt like the system that the Ravens were running, it wasn't the best for receivers. It didn't put his full talents on display. It didn't utilize him as he felt like he should have been utilized. And I know a lot of people, which is a good argument, a lot of people are like, hey, man, this dude had uh, over 1,000 yards the last year. He had a bunch of targets, a bunch of catches and stuff, but he had the drops. And, and that all, all of that stuff is true. All of it is true. But maybe he also didn't see himself getting paid from the Baltimore Ravens because if he looked at recent history, and I looked at recent history, I could think like, man, uh, when the last time a, a Ravens receiver got a real second contract? I know Chris Moore, he got a second contract technically, uh, but other than that, it's it's slim pickings. Like, Ravens don't, <laughs> don't be handing out money like that to these receivers, man. Uh, so he could have been looking at that and been like, ooh, uh, yeah, I don't know about this one. Like, I love this team. I love Lamar. I love the city. love the fans. love all that stuff. But I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if this is a good look for me. Because the way that I always took it for Hollywood wanting to leave is business. It's just business. 
business. He's thinking, all right, um, I'm in my my, my third year, uh, getting ready to go into my fourth. Uh, all right, money moves got to be made, man, because money moves got to be made, and it's it's time. I I, I got to figure this thing out. I got to figure out what's gonna be best for me. Like best for me And to go play with one of your real 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 good friends And then have the opportunity to go play with Another one of your real 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 good friends And Kyler Murray Go from Lamar to Kyler Murray It's like oh it, okay I'm straight And this is the guy that helped me get drafted In the first round in the first place So why not Why not oh this is the offense Where they really be passing that ball Okay yeah I'm straight I'm set And again he was straight He was set because he was doing a phenomenal job at the beginning of the year But again Then he got hurt Got hurt uh, Initially had an uh, had the opportunity Well he would have had the opportunity To play with DeAndre Hopkins So you gotta be thinking Oh yeah Kyler Murray DeAndre Hopkins Me Oh yeah let's get it baby Then of course DeAndre Hopkins He got suspended And Hollywood was doing his thing Then he got hurt So It just It just all got Messed up um, so we'll see how uh, how things are this year for him. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. But as far as that, the answer to your question, do I think that he regrets his decision with leaving the Baltimore Ravens? No, I, I don't think he does. I don't think he does um, because he. I think he wanted to just set himself up to be in the best position to get paid. And with the Baltimore Ravens, I, he probably doesn't think it was going to happen. Uh, looking at Rashad Bateman right now, I know their careers started off and they they've taken completely different. Turns and whatnot, um, because with Hollywood, when you think about Hollywood, like he was available like ninety nine percent of the time. I think I mi- I think I remember him missing maybe one, maybe two games, maybe something like that. But it was not many at all for I- anything that he did miss. It was not many. He was somebody that that was always out there, always out there. Um, so with Rashad Bateman, uh, where he is going into year three. I know he got to be thinking about some stuff too, but it's been different because I know he done missed a significant amount of time with injury. But um, I, I just uh, with, with Hollywood, I don't think he regrets it because I, I do think he he I, I'm sure he, he be getting his information because he's very active on Twitter and social media and all that stuff. So I'm sure he be seeing what's going on with the Ravens and stuff. Obviously, everybody know they got a new offensive coordinator. They done finally moved on from Giro. And sometimes when you think about certain situations, you may be like, man. Um, you know what? I, I'm, I'm gonna put myself out there. This this situation is 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 hurting me right now. But you know, I'm I'm gonna be willing to put myself out there, maybe for the greater good of somebody else. I may not reap all the benefits of this situation improving, because I may be I may be the one that has to suffer for a little bit. But if my people, if they could they could do better, if they could end up doing better for me doing it, okay, cool, cool, cool. So Hollywood call it out. He called it out plenty of times. Called it out publicly. Called out the uh, the offense and whatnot. What's the point of having soldiers if you if you ain't gonna use them and whatnot? He he was somebody that was a a big advocate for change with the Baltimore Ravens offense. And while he was with the Ravens, it did not happen. Even the the year that he left, it still did not happen. But it took a, a year, a year after he left, it took a year for them to finally be like, all right, we 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 moving now, we moving now. So he may be looking back. Hey, I don't think we we'll regret, but be be looking back like. All right, I think uh, I was a positive part of that change that happened with the Baltimore Ravens. I, I would think that I had a, a positive impact on just helping them move forward to get to something that could end up being good and being better for the receivers specifically um, because he knows that they need it. They want it. So, yeah, I, I don't think he regrets it uh, at all. But yeah, he is he is a part. It's, it's more than just Hollywood, obviously. But he is a, a part of why things are different now. Why things are headed in a different direction uh, with the offense now. Hollywood was uh, definitely a, a part of that. So again, I, I don't think it's any regret whatsoever. Um, I don't think it's one. I think I think it is one of them things where he may be thinking like, "Oh man, I I wish they would have been like this when I was there." Um, but I don't think there's regret Uh, Because again He was doing just fine uh, Before he got hurt But that is a really really good question It is really really uh, interesting To think about sometimes Because you think about like Any player that uh, That requests to be traded Just think about all the situations 
Um, all of the situations have been different. Hollywood went to Arizona. Uh, he was doing a great job, and then he got hurt, unfortunately. Um, Orlando Brown Jr., <laughs> brunch Super Bowl champion Orlando Brown Jr. And now he got a big payday from the Bengals. So he, he going to get to see the Ravens two times a year now. And, I mean, I don't think there's any ill will or anything like that. But because it's business. It's business. Orlando Brown Jr. was trying to get paid. The Ravens paid Ronnie Stanley. He knew they weren't going to pay him. Okay, go get your money. Get your bread, man. And not a, he got a Super Bowl championship and his bread. So he won. Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst. Oh, man. Um, it's been rough for him. I, for, I for, forgot where he signed at this offseason. I really did. Um, but for Hayden Hurst, he was a first round pick from the Ravens. Asked to be traded because of playing time and stuff. He wasn't getting an opportunity like that. And I get it. Okay, Mark Andrews took your spot, which is tough. That's really tough. But Mark Andrews took his spot. He was a backup. Sharing sharing the, the wealth with Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle He asked if he traded He got traded to the Falcons They they traded him to the Falcons Falcons drafted Kyle Pitts So it's like, oh, really? I, I, I You asked for a trade for more playing time You got traded and they, then they end up taking a tight end With their first pick It's like, oof Then he goes to the Bengals um, And he is the, their tight end Their primary tight end and whatnot Gets to go to what the AFC Championship, I think, and but yeah, that that was that. I don't know where he is now. I know he got signed, but I cannot remember where he is now. I, please, y'all remind me where he is. I don't remember. Um, Chuck Clark, Chuck Clark, who uh, I mean, can you blame him for requesting to be traded last year after the Ravens signed Marcus Williams and they drafted Kyle Hamlin? Like, can you blame him for requesting to be traded? I get it, man. Again, it's business, but I get it. Like, y'all. Brought in replacements for me Yeah okay I want to be out But he had to be traded last year Ravens tried Didn't work uh, Then he finally got traded this year Ravens was like Alright we ready to move on Well I mean They were ready to move on last year Because they tried But it just didn't work So what happened Unfortunately uh, He did get traded Which was cool for him Great New opportunity with the Jets Great defense already He could help And make them even better But then unfortunately He got hurt man and that that's that sucks. That's really bad. It, that's really unfortunate, man. So yeah, when um so when players they they request to be traded again, it's it's one of those life altering decisions that they uh that they make. Um, and it could go so many different ways. It can go so many different ways, and it's uh it's it's scary to think about. But at the same time. You got to be willing to take that risk uh, if you want to try to better yourself. And that's what all these players were trying to do. They're really just trying to better themselves. They were trying to better themselves for their business. They were trying to better themselves uh, just for yeah for the trajectory of their careers. Uh, for some, it worked out. For others, it didn't quite work out as much. Next question came from my guy, Terrell B. He said, Lamar needs a nickname for Zay Flowers or is Isaiah Likely? Uh, he said, is it safe to call Zay Flowers Zay? And call likely Zykely. I know, and that Zay, Zay. Okay, yeah, I get that one. And I mean Isaiah Likely, that was his nickname too, Zay. I, but the whole Zykely, I don't know that 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 sounds too close to calling him like to me. Sound like too sound too close to calling him like Zaddy. And I'm like, I ain't about to call him with no dudes no Zaddy, man. That's so why that like so I don't know. He call call Likely, call him like, call him Likely, call him uh. I don't, well, can't call them Zay because well, you could call them Zay. Well, whatever. They 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 gonna figure it out. Next question, or oh, it looks like a comment came from my guy Howard. He said, "What's happening in Graven? I just uh, watched a video talking about the good time experience you had up here in Baltimore. Uh, first, I'm glad you and the fam had a great time. Well, it, it was just me, not the fam. But no, I appreciate it. <laughs> he said, second, the guy you were talking about that's always standing next to Harbaugh on the sidelines. His name is Craig. Uh, he's a head of Raven security. I've known him since 94 from playing the basketball in rec leagues. He used to coach basketball. and He's been a police officer for a very long time. Plus, we lived on the same block until a couple of years ago. I think you may be right. Let, let me look him up right now. Uh, head of Raven Security. Just to make sure. Because it probably is going to be him. Which I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, yep, that's him. That's him. That's exactly who it is. And that's that's who I was talking about. Because I was um, I was telling the, the, the story of how uh, when... 
with when we went up there most recently to Baltimore, and um, that was for Tom Grassi thing, and uh, because he had invited us up there, and so we got to go to the castle. We got to go do the stadium tour to M and T Bank Stadium, but then we got to go to the castle. And it was cool, uh, but I was telling people I, I had never been inside the castle before. To, to the training camp side, yeah. Uh, but the closest I had been to inside the castle, like the office part, uh, was just being right out in the front. Um, but when we was out there, like I was telling the, the guy that's always on the sideline with Harbaugh, he came, he kicked us out. He like, no, you, you, you can't be here. You got, you got to move. And he ain't doing it no rude or disrespectful way or nothing like that. He just told us we, we had to move. Because we had to move. Um, but, yeah, I was like, man, that guy, that's the guy that's always on the sideline with hardball, like, all the time. I always see him. But, yeah, that's exactly who that is. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, Aloha, Engraven from Ravens Flock in Hawaii. What's up, baby? He said, we'll love to get your take on the running back position. With all the uncertainty about J.K. Dobbins going around, it has put a spotlight on the position. It sure has. Uh, as much as I like Justice Hill and Gus Edwards, I just don't think either of them are as explosive of SJK Dobbins. Since we are stacked at tight end with Mark Andrews and likely we're trading Charlie Cole off or running back, makes sense. Or do you think JK is just using social media to help himself get a better contract and there's nothing to worry about? Uh, no, I definitely think it's, it's about the bread. It's about money, but uh, he's in a tough position. Um, but as far as trading Ch Charlie Cole off, he ain't going to get you anything. And there ain't, no, ain't nothing against him, but it's just last year, he missed like 99% of last year. Uh, he was out. And then, like, he, he, like, nobody knows anything about Charlie Cola on an NFL level yet. So you're not going to be able to field, a, a, you're not going to be able to trade for anything for him. Like, you're not going to get anything of significance for Charlie Cola at this point in his career right now. So you wouldn't be able to trade him for a running back. But you've got running backs out there on a free agent mark. I mean, Dalvin Cook, you know, he's obviously sitting right there. Um, and, I mean, nothing, nothing would happen until they figured out what's going to happen with J.K. I don't see them making no move at running back until they figure out what's going to happen with J.K. But a lot of Ravens have been talking about Keith Mitchell. Uh, so, that again, that name, his name just keep buzzing everywhere we hear. We keep hearing about him over and over and over and over. Um, but as far as trading for a running back, no, nah, I, I, I don't see them doing that at, at all. Uh, and as far as J.K. Dobbins, he said, is he using social media to help himself get a better contract and there's nothing to worry about? Um I didn't even necessarily. I, I don't think J, J.K. doesn't have right now. He doesn't have the power to use social media to get a better contract, in my opinion, because he uh, he just the the leverage just isn't there for him right now. It's it's not there. And since his, the leverage is not there, then he he don't, he don't have any. So um, we'll see what happens with him. Um, I I I just got no clue where it's headed right now. I I think we just had to wait till training camp to see what happens. Then if he starts practicing and all that, then. Um, but it's just one of those things We just gotta wait it out The last question on this special episode Came from my guy Cooper He said, hey man My name is Cooper Love the Viz And would love to be in one one day My question is What is your prediction For the record this year For the Baltimore Ravens Mine is 12 and 5 I believe it's valid Thanks man And have a great day Appreciate that, Coop um, Ravens record this year mm, Cooper, 12 and 5 Um if they stay healthy, like, and I know not everybody going to stay, well, hopefully everybody will stay healthy, but I know it's football, so stuff happens. But if they can, majority of the Ravens and their key players stay healthy, um, I think a ceiling for them could be 14 and 3, 15 and 2, like a ceiling, like that's the high. Um, if they stay healthy, because they, 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 they got pieces, man, they really do. Uh, a low, I think, would be 11 and 6. 11 and 6, 12 and 5. Anywhere from 10 and 7. Oh, that, no, that don't make no sense, though. 10 and 7, that, like, that, that's only if they got, if they're healthy, then no. 10 and 7, just, it, that can't happen. Um, the health, a low would be 11 and 6, 12 and 5, I think. So that's the range that I'm thinking. A uh, low of 11 and 6 for the high of 15 and 2. Yeah.